In my line of work, presenting the highest quality image is key. Start building your website today at squarespace.com. Use the offer code CARL to get a 10% discount. I'm Carl Taylor, and this is my Squarespace. I want to talk to you about preparing your images for print. And I mean by uh, print, I mean professional lab prints uh, for exhibition quality prints. Now, if you're going to uh, spend a lot of time doing great photography and then you want to output your pictures to great display material, it's very important that your screen is calibrated. Uh, I use the X-Rite system uh, of calibration. This is a dense automata that clips on the screen. And with the software provided, it will run through a series of test colors and uh, contrast ranges, and it will calibrate your screen so that it is far more accurate and therefore more likely to match the output at the other end when you're uh, getting your print made at a professional lab. Now, that's the first stage of the process. One of the other things that you need to think about is to do with the preparation of the image in Photoshop before you send it for printing. Because there are a couple of things that you can do to enhance the image uh, for the printing stage. And the reason is that when you look at the image on screen, um, like we're doing here, it looks very bright and punchy, nice and clear. Um, but the reality is that you're changing material. You're going from a screen image here, which has got a beautiful vibrancy to because of the uh, backlit screen display device. Uh, and then you're going to put that image onto a printed piece of paper. And it will lose some of that vibrancy when it's on paper because you're dealing with a reflected light image rather than a backlit display like we've got here. So there are a couple of things that you need to put into place that may enhance and help the image for the uh, printed material. Now those things are usually to do with contrast and sharpening. Um, so we're going to look at a couple of those techniques, or the techniques that I use anyway, to enhance the pictures a little bit for printing. Uh, other things you need to think about are image size, output, checking that the image is of sufficient resolution. Um, you can do that in the menu up here using image size. You can check the dimensions of your image and the resolution, which is in pixels per inch. Uh, your ProLab printer will specify and tell you what the pixels per inch settings are of the machines that they're outputting to. I generally find uh, with my images and the lab that I use um, that they can easily output to twice the size that the Photoshop document says that it, the image is actually showing as. Um, other things that you might want to think about as well is if you want to put a border on your image is that you may have to change the canvas size. So uh, you can just go into canvas size on the menu. Um, here I'm just going to add a white border by increasing the uh, size of the canvas but not increasing the size of the actual image. And there we go, by increasing that canvas, it's now added a white border. So if I sent that to the lab at a given size, I know I'm gonna get my picture back with the white border embedded into that actual print. I'm just gonna go back in the history and remove that. So that's one of the things to do with sizes, but what about the actual image itself? Well, if we zoom in on this image, um, this one is actually um, already been prepared for printing because I've printed this before. But there are a few things that we can do um, if you wanted to improve an image for print. Uh, and let's start off with the sharpening. Uh, using the unsharp mask filter is a great place to start. I'm just going to duplicate my layer here, just so I've got a copy. I'm going to go up to filter, to sharpen, to unsharp mask. And I'm going to just start off, we've got a setting there of 100% at one pixel. And if I flick that on and off, you can see there on the screen, just a very slight adjustment in sharpening. If I zoom in a little bit, say on that eye, and we just flick that on and off, you can just see 
a little boost in the sharpness there. Now obviously we can adjust the radius sharpening there, I can up that to two and we can see that that's quite a bit more sharpening added there as well. So that's one technique for improving the sharpening of the image uh, prior to sending it to print. Um, another technique which I like to use is to give the image uh, an overall boost in contrast and I also use the unsharp mask filter for that technique as well but we use it slightly differently. We go into unsharp mask and I set the settings in at 20% at uh, about 40 pixels. That does depend however on the resolution of the image. This is quite a high resolution image, it's a 60, uh, five mega, uh, uh, 65 megabyte image. Um, and at 20% at 40 pixels, you can see how that's given that an overall contrast boost. And that can be really great because sometimes your print images look a little bit flat. And by adding this extra contrast boost that you can see there, that I'm applying there, that can boost it up um, just that little bit more to make it that little bit more exciting when you see it on print. Now it might not look very good on screen, but you can't assess the results of what you see on screen compared to what you see on print. What you need to do is run a series of tests, test a few different techniques, get them printed, and then look at the results. And then by assessing those results and making notes of your settings, you can find out what settings look good for the final print. Okay, so that's a basic contrast boost. We can also add a contrast boost by using an adjustment layer, uh, using a curves adjustment. I'm just going to bring up um, a curves adjustment layer here. And I'm just going to pull up the highlights a little bit there. And that will boost the contrast. If I flick that on and off, you can see that little boost in contrast that that's offered. But in doing that, what I've also done is I've added some extra saturation. And I may not have wanted that saturation. So if that's the case, then switch the layer blend mode to luminosity. If you switch it to luminosity, it only considers the contrast boost and it doesn't consider the saturation boost. But in saying that, sometimes you might find that the saturation boost is useful to you. You may find that uh, after testing your images with your lab, that sometimes a 10% increase in saturation before you send it to the lab gives you a nice result for your final prints. So those are a couple of uh, techniques for boosting contrast and sharpening. Uh, let's have a look at one more technique. I'm just going to go into a filter setting here which is in the other filters and it's called a high pass filter. And what I need to do is select a pixel radius. Now you can test anything from one to five pixels. It depends on what level of sharpening you want to get from this. I'm going to go with a two pixel radius boost here and say OK to that. Now you can't see a great deal there going on screen. You can maybe just make out uh, an image there um, in that high pass filter. Uh, but what you need to do is change the blending mode to uh, overlay and when you switch that to overlay you will now see a significant boost in the sharpness of the image using that high, power, high pass filter. There you can see that really easily. Look how it's bringing out that detail and it gives a, an apparent sharpening effect and contrast boost as well. So those are several techniques that we've looked at there. High pass filter, um, the adjustment layer using a curves adjustment uh, set to luminosity mode, a uh, unsharp mask filter using a 20% um, percent 40 pixel radius um, adjustment and also using the unsharp mask in its own right just set to 100% at a 1 or 2 pixel adjustment. Now you may find that a combination of those work well for you, one or two of them work well or one on its own works well, um, but it's a good idea as I say to make several different versions of the image using those settings, send them to the lab, noting down what settings you use, get the results back from the lab, find a setting that works well for you and then make a note of it for future reference. My passion is photography. Whether shooting for clients or teaching students, the excitement of great photography never gets old. Check out my website for free training, a complete range of courses and even photography workshops. Thank you for watching.